The Philadelphia 76ers last year had a really rough season. They were middle of the pack in the Eastern Conference after previously being in the second round in a matchup that easily could have gotten them to the Eastern Conference Finals, if not for that crazy shot by Kawhi Leonard. And in the 2020 season, they clearly fell off from that after the additions of Al Horford and Josh Richardson replacing Jimmy Butler. And on top of that, the bad contract that they gave to Al Horford and of course Tobias Harris. All of these bad signings, the poor construction of this roster resulted in the Sixers losing in the first round in four games to the Boston Celtics. Part of this because Ben Simmons was hurt, but at the end of the day, this roster was just not very good. So in this offseason, there was need for some drastic change. The first thing was signing Doc Rivers, but the next thing was signing Daryl Morey, who had recently departed from the Houston Rockets. Daryl Morey came in there and he made a bunch of changes. And now the Sixers currently sit at the top of the Eastern Conference and look so significantly better than what they did last year. Let's talk about how Mori actually accomplished this. Before I continue, there is about a 50% chance that if you're watching this video, you are not subscribed. So if you're watching videos on this channel consistently, then please subscribe. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. A few things to promote. One, go subscribe to my second channel. I have been uploading post-game NBA reactions. I uploaded one yesterday about the Suns Mavericks game, the Heat Hornets game, the Bulls Knicks game, and the Lakers Hawks game. My thoughts on everything that went down there. That was a good slide of games. And also new my NBA video if you haven't watched that one already and new podcast should be out now by the time this video is up so go check out all those things all those are going to be linked in the description before we dive into these moves and how they ended up changing this team let's talk about the actual changes themselves how the Sixers went from middle of the pack in the Eastern Conference to currently the best team in the Eastern Conference the Sixers this year at the time of recording this video are currently 15 and 6. They are number 4 in defense and 12th in offense. The defense is not a surprise, but the offense feels much better. Even though it's technically only one spot higher than where the Sixers were last year, when I watch the Sixers, it seems so much more fluid. Like, I realize the offensive rating difference isn't that significant, but I just think it's pretty clear that they're better. I guess maybe a bunch of other offenses got better and it kind of balanced out, but to me, it's pretty clear the Sixers offense has improved. I think the big thing that is the reason why that's kind of similar is because Ben Simmons has had a down year. If he was as good as he was last year, then they probably would be in the top 10. But let's actually see how the Sixers made these improvements through Daryl Morey's moves. The first move that Daryl Morey made as GM was trading Josh Richardson for for Seth Curry. Now, this move on the surface might actually appear like a minor downgrade, though for the most part, most people viewed it as pretty much an even trade because Josh Richardson is a better creator and a better defensive player, which is two things that the Mavericks have needed. And Seth Curry is a significantly better three-point shooter, but everything else about his game is pretty mediocre. It might seem like possibly a bit of a downgrade because you're gonna hurt your defense and some of your shot creating, but Seth Curry has been awesome for the Sixers, first of all, and second of all, because of how good of a three-point shooter he is, he fits way better with this team that is in desperate need of spacing and always has been. And Seth this year has shot 50% from three on five attempts per game and has just looked awesome for the Sixers. I don't expect the 50% mark to hold up, but he's shown through his career he can be like a 45% three-point shooter, so he was a nice addition. That was a good trade, even if Josh Richardson is probably a slightly better player than Seth Curry. Then he drafted Tyrese Maxey, who has been a standout rookie and potentially the steal of this draft. There are a few candidates for that, Emmanuel Quickly, Tyrese Halliburton. He definitely has a shot as well. Tyrese is averaging 10 points per game on relatively good efficiency, though he's not shooting that well from three. But even more important than his actual scoring, Tyrese Maxey has this energy to him that I feel radiates with the team. Tyrese is a high energy guy who he looks like he's having fun out there, and I don't know how much that actually contributes in the win column but it's nice to see that's for sure then he signed Dwight Howard to fill a hole in the backup center spot that he'd soon create see the Sixers always had this issue since Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons got there where anytime Joel Embiid was off of the court the center replacing him 
was not good. Like, if I think back, it was Jaleel Okafor, then it was fucking Kylo Quinn. The, there were not many great backup center options on this team, so the solution to this for the last Sixers front office was to sign Al Horford to every dollar that exists. And that was clearly a mistake, because paying him that much money meant they also had to play him with Joel Embiid. So, that was a stupid decision. I, I think it's pretty obvious that was a stupid decision. But Maury was like, okay, how about instead of that, I sign one of the best backup centers in the league for nearly a minimum contract. And that's what he did. So now the Sixers have one of the best backup centers in the league for next to nothing instead of Al Horford for next to everything. I'm not necessarily crediting Maury for not making just a completely obviously stupid decision. I'm just trying to point out that contrast of competence versus complete and utter incompetence. Speaking of Al, easily the most impressive move that Maury made since his Sixers tenure so far has been actually getting off of Al Horford's contract in exchange for just one first round pick one first round pick that is something right there if he traded al horford and a first for uh danny green and Ty er, terrence ferguson terrence ferguson is a young guy that might be a rotation player eventually he isn't right now and i've never thought that much of him but he's not horrible i guess danny green is also not horrible despite what nba twitter would tell you as funny as it is to clown on danny green and believe me it is funny he is still one of the better three and d players in the league this year he shot about 36 percent for three and about five attempts per game which is not outstanding but it's pretty solid and he is one of the best perimeter defenders in the nba as well but more importantly only than that, he is an expiring contract, so they got Al Horford's salary off of the books for this coming offseason, which is huge. That's literally freeing like $25 million in cap space. So after all of these trades and this draft, add on to this that they signed Doc Rivers, who, even though I'm not a huge fan, is definitely a better coach than Brett Brown. It should have been more expected that the Sixers would be pretty good this year. When you compare this Sixers team to last year's Sixers team, it's pretty much night and day because the Sixers last year were a struggle across the board because of the awkward Al Horford fit. And I want to reiterate, as I've said before, with Il Al Horford a bunch of times, Il Horford, he has not been washed. He just simply did not fit very well with the Sixers. It was an awkward as hell fit, and you saw that pretty much any time you turn on a Sixers game. Add on to that that Tobias Harris is playing small forward when he's really a power forward, and it just added to the awkwardness. This year, though, Al Horford's gone. Tobias Harris is playing his actual position and fucking killing it. He is averaging 20 points per game, which is almost the same as last year, but he's doing it on 6% better true shooting, and he's very clearly a more aggressive player, but more importantly, a more efficient player. Tyrese Maxey has looked really good as a scorer. Of course, he had that 39-point game against the Denver Nuggets. And Shake Milton has averaged 14 points per game off of the bench. Really good scoring. And that's without his three-point shot dropping, which I think it eventually will. So that's a really good sign for Shake Milton being like a pretty damn good NBA player. He was not an addition made by Maury, but he's been given opportunity and he's been good. But most important among all the names that I can say is Joel Embiid has been completely unlocked this year. He is now in a situation where he can average 28 and 11 on good shooting, including 40% from three this year. His actual splits are not that far from 50, 40, 90. But more importantly than that, the reason why he's able to put up these numbers is that instead of kicking it to Al Horford on the perimeter, he is kicking it to Seth Curry, Danny Green, or Tobias Harris. And those guys are much much better three-point shooters and much more consistent three-point shooters than Al Horford, at least uh, Seth and Tobias are. So for that reason, this is making all the world of a difference. Like this Sixers team clearly always needed spacing around it and Maury finally gave them the spacing they need. Also, Josh Richardson was not that great as a three-point shooter either, so that wasn't helping. And then I don't know if you've heard this, but uh, Ben Simmons can't shoot. I don't know if that's news to anybody. In summary though, what Daryl Morey did was nothing like mind-boggling. It was not rocket science. He just simply applied competence to an organization that had not had that competence ever since the formation of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid as a duo. And in contrast to what they were doing previously, he looks like a genius just because of how stupid the last regime was. Now, the Sixers are far from a finished product. They do have this cap space going in the next offseason, which they could potentially use to land something nice, but there are still some issues with this team. Ben Simmons has had a down year. He, he just, I don't know if he's ever going to be aggressive enough to really reach his potential, especially not on a team with Joel Embiid on it. 
I think this team needs a secondary playmaker. I've always liked the idea of Ben Simmons used in a Draymond Green type of role from the like 2016 Warriors where he's a pick and roll guy who rolls with the basket and then finds passes off of that roll or just finishes on the roll. Also, I'm worried about the shooting coming down back to earth. Joel Embiid is shooting 40% from three. Seth Curry is shooting 50%. Tobias is shooting like 40 eight percent Furkan Korkmaz is shooting like 39 percent which I think is more reasonable but still a, a lot of high volume and high efficiency shooting coming from this team their overall three-point percentage is middle of the pack for the team there are a good amount of players who are exceeding their shooting ability so far this year and I'm concerned that that might fall down and they'll be a worse team as a result but overall this was a very good rebuild although my rebuild of the Sixers in 2k over on my gaming channel is better so Congrats on second place, Daryl Morey. Again, check out that second channel, check out that podcast, check out that new My NBA video. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video, and that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and keep you watching music.